But maybe I was very adamant, saying, look, I only want the best. Now, if I have to put in my hard work, uh, then so be it. So people said, you know what, I am, but then there is XLRI, there is SPJN, there are these, you know, ABC. I said, no, no, tell me only about I am. <laughs> what do I have to do to get through I am? They said, okay, do this, do this, do this. And I did. And fourth year, uh, I didn't make, make it. That's obvious. Uh, but then <laughs> Infosys picked me. Uh, they thought that I can do something in software. So I went and I came to Pune. Pune was my first posting and Enfi trained me. The best thing about Enfi's training was that they put a lot of focus on soft skills. And they thought that if you could be the guys who can understand what clients want and speak in that language, the rest of the software part is probably just hygiene. So that four months rigorous training, I think that changed a lot inside me. And the fact that I wanted to do my MBA, I was very curious to just do that soft skills. I didn't care so much about Oracle and Unix training uh, and my wife Shraddha used to be with me uh, in those training days so she used to take care that I pass those exams somehow but I used to focus more on how do you present in front of a video camera and how does the video turn out uh, do people clap after they see it do I give good, good presentations and uh, they said but you're an infi you have to know how to code the best I said okay we'll talk about that uh, somehow I made through the Exam. I failed in INFI exam, one of the exams. So I was about to be thrown out of INFI. Uh, but the rules were that you're given another chance, and if you pass, uh, you stay. Uh, I almost passed. Uh, and I was sent to Bangalore to do some great things uh, in the EHL account. But as it turned out, even there, I was like a lowest performer in whatever I was given to do. There was a there was a informics fourth generation code that I was supposed to interpret and solve bugs. And I didn't understand what that code meant. Uh, so every day I used to bang my head and say, how do I solve this bug? Where is it? And my mentor used to tell me that oh, you have to understand these aspects. And incidentally, those were the years when, uh, like Thai, there was a volunteer organization called Toastmasters Club. And uh, they were talking to Infi. And I was like, the theory of Toastmasters Club looks great. They help you become better communicator by just creating a volunteer uh, audience around you. Let me do that. So I went and uh, spoke about these guys and I learned how to do it. They said, we are looking for a VP education who can communicate. I said, look, I can't even talk in, in good English. He said, no, no, no. We'll nominate people and if you want to join, join. So I was the vice president of education of Infosys Toastmasters Club, creating a club out of nothing. I was like, wow, that's cool, <laughs> that's good. And my mentor, my team leader, she used to tell me that your code is not working and you're preparing for this meeting. I like, look, I'll take care of this. But let me do that because that also interests me. So while I used to somehow manage my coding, I used to create a club. And we created a 50 people club in one year uh, with a lot of people uh, actually making it to IMS except me. I didn't make it. But a lot of people went to IMS uh, through that club. Uh, there was a $100 million presentation session in Infosys, which celebrated APAC becoming a $100 million club. And I said, I want to be the MOC. I want to be the master of ceremonies and present before Narayan Murthy. People said, what? You're young. You're just one year. I said, so what? I'm running the club. I can talk. I can present. They introduced, and I presented. And I think that was one of the much talked about events I said, wow, if I can do that, I am I can definitely make it next year. People say, what? <laughs> People prepare to go to the US and settle there. Why are you not planning to go to US? I said, look, US doesn't excite me. I want to do this, that's it. Only I am, only MBA. That guy who was in UNGC, I want to become that. <laughs> so second year again happens and uh, there was another college because of my friends, FMS. So I had been filling forms only of IMs and FMS. And people were saying, look, hedge your risk. Just fill up these other colleges also. I'm like, no, either it's this or nothing, it's zero or one. And uh, luckily, I went through FMS. Uh, it happened. Uh, and FMS also changed a lot of things inside me. FMS gave me a lot of maturity to understand why people do MBA. Though I didn't study much there, uh, but what I did was a lot of market research, a lot of uh, on the road case studies, uh, and that helped. Second year of MBA. And is a, a, FMS is a prestigious college. People get into consulting companies and you know big FMCG marketing. And I wanted to know how do people get into sales? It was one of the uh, guest lectures I attended. There were very flamboyant sales guys who come here and who talk 
I was like, I want to become that sales guy. He has the ability to influence people. And I'm like, I have seen bankers and I did my summer training in Stanchart. It looked boring. For some reason, <laughs> I had done my summers thinking banking is exciting. You know, people talk about you do banking, I banking, Stanchart is the biggest MNC and you know. So I went through MNC and I was there for two, three months and I was like, that's boring. This sales guy is exciting. He can influence, he influenced me. I want to become a sales guy. So I said, how do people get into sales after MBA? People said, no, they don't. They don't teach sales in uh, MBA colleges. They only teach marketing. I said, so how do I learn sales? There's no answers. I said, okay, so what's the pre-step? <coughs> Pre-sales. I said, okay, sir. And people are saying, nobody in FMS does pre-sales in an IT company. They all do iBanking, uh, consulting, SAPs, and Capgeminis. You're saying you want to do pre-sales? I'm like, yes, because that's the only door you're saying to sales, right? So why is there a second thought? And the only company who was offering pre-sales in FMS, that was the third ranked company on day three, if you know day zero, day one, day two, it was a day three company, Wipro. I was like, I want to only apply to Wipro. <laughs> People are saying, you got a pre-placement offer from Stanchard. You have an offer waiting from SAP. And you're saying you want to apply for pre-sales in Wipro? I'm like, yeah, that's the only route to sales. <coughs> so, those guys still don't like me, but I went to Wipro anyway. <laughs> and people still don't like me for the decisions I made, but I think I was lucky. I think I I took those risks because I was headstrong, I was adamant about what I want to do. It could have been a different life. It could have been wrong decisions, but I'm sitting here, so I think those decisions were not so bad. Uh, I went to Wipro, and as it turned out, they wanted somebody to do mergers and acquisitions for Wipro's area and so I was like, wow, mergers and acquisitions, day one, after D school, who does that? So I did that. For six months, I was just studying companies that Wipro could acquire. And I was working with Sudeep Nandi, who was the Chief Strategy Officer of Wipro. And he used to guide me as to how you study companies. How do you study their performance? What parameters do you make to acquire companies? Which is the best strategy for it? And I was like, wow, even if it's not sales, this is cool. Because people talk about mergers and acquisitions when they have done five years of investment banking and stuff like that. And I did that in the day one, uh, six months. <coughs> That happened, and then they said enough of mergers and acquisitions. They scrapped the idea. The string of pearls acquisition strategy was not working, so I was put into another role, which was uh, transition management. These large outsourcing deals, three million, five million, forty people, they have to be transitioned from the client side to the vendor side. They said, you know what? Why don't you do the transition management? I said, what? Twenty-year experienced people are the ones who are responsible for doing it. You're telling me I should go there and transition the account from UK <coughs> to India. Photo people, team. I need to set up a team. I have to interview people. I have to interview clients. I have not done that. They said exactly. We want that. You've not not done that. I think you'll do well. So my only role was to listen to clients, to document what the requirements are, to tell my team what the client wants. Induct new members, grow it from 0 to 15, 20 in the first 3 months. And people are saying, you're doing documentation. You know that? <laughs> you're, just, you're just listening to clients. You're not doing any uh, active work. And I'm like, but I'm learning. I'm learning what the clients want, what their problems are. And you're saying, no, this is back end work. You're spoiling your career. And I'm like, so be it. But the way I see it, I'm learning what this client wants. And that's great. So uh, maybe the way I used to look at things was a little different. But then those were back end jobs. I mean. To be fair, transition management, sitting in an ODC, just being on presentations, listening to people was not fun. But I did that for six months and I was pulled out and said, okay, enough. Uh, that transition is done. Uh, I don't know whether it was successful or not. Till the first six months it was successful. Uh, but I was put into pre-sales after the first time. I'm going to make you pause there a little bit and deliberately step back. Because <coughs> some of the other comments you made to me when we were talking, I think say something about you. Um, when you were doing mergers and acquisitions, you know, you talked about looking at those companies. And they were just measly little twenty million dollar firms, right? <laughs> Tell us about that just a little bit. And your sentiments were about that. I miss that, yeah. So yeah, so I was still a high flying B school guy from FMS coming into Wipro and made a mind with her that, you know, I'm not meant for Wipro. But somehow I was saying, but pre sales sales, so I'll do Wipro. So I was this in my mind a high flying B school guy sitting there in Wipro, but I'm still learning something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, merchants and acquisitions, wow.